Hello. So in this video, we're going to talk about the emitter biasing configuration. Emitter biasing. I'm going to draw the skeleton for the standard emitter biasing uh, configuration or network, which is my collector connected to a VCC supply via collector resistor RC. My base connected also to the supply via a base resistor RB. But now I do have a meter resistor RE, which that's why it's called emitter biasing. Um, my nominal Q point that I want to bias this transistor to is going to be an IC of 1 milliamp and a VCE of 4.5 volts. Why 4.5 volts? Well, uh, I would like to center my collector terminal, my VC voltage, which is here at around halfway between the supply and ground. And so if this is 5 volts and I have 1 milliamp flowing through this branch, I'm going to have some drop across that emit the resistor. Um, and so I'm, I'm deciding that that voltage drop across the emitter resistor is going to be 0.5 volts, which is me, gives me a collector emitter voltage of 4.5 volts then, in order to, again, center that collector terminal. Uh, so let's go ahead and do the calculation, see what our resistor values need to be in order to set that Q point. Uh, we're going to assume, again, that the nominal beta is 100, but that beta can change within the range from 100 to 300. Uh, since I'm in the linear region, or I want to be in the linear region, I see is equal to beta IB, and from here I can calculate the needed value of IB to set IC to 1 milliamp. That's going to be IC over beta, or 1 milliamp divided by 100, which is 10 microamps. Uh, I'm going to select an RC value to center PC. Um, next, I want PC being equal to 5 volts. And so RC is going to be equal to, from picture, VCC minus VC uh, divided by IC per Ohm's law. So VCC minus VC over IC. And I want VC to be centered at 5 volts. Uh, so that means this is 10 volts minus 5 volts divided by 1 milliamp, which is 5 kilo ohms. So just like before, 5 kilo ohms for RC. Now I need to select the value of RE. And again, since I want my VCE to be equal to um, 4.5 volts, if I just set my VCE equal to 5 volts and I want uh, VCE to be 4.5 volts, that means that the voltage drop across that emitter resistor needs to be 0.5 volts. So, set um, VE at 0.5 volts. And again, this is because um, VCE is equal to VC minus VE. Therefore, VE is equal to uh, VC minus VCE. I want VC to be 5 volts, or I just set it to be 5 volts. I want uh, VC to be 4.5 volts, because that's my Q point. So this is just 0.5 volts. And so my RE ends up being VE divided by IC. Now, technically speaking, it will be divided by IE. Um, and I guess I'll do IE, but since we are making the approximation that IC and IE are approximately equal, I can also rewrite this as VE over IC. So 0.5 volts divided by 1 milliamp, or 500 ohms. So I have my RC, I have my RE. Uh, the last thing I need to uh, find is RB, the value of RB to set my base current to 10 microamps. And so choose RB to set IB to 10 microamps. 
Now V is going to be equal again by Ohm's law. This is C minus VB divided by RB, by IB, sorry. Now the base voltage in this case, uh, VB, it's going to need to be uh, 0.7 volts plus the voltage drop across the emitter resistor because again, uh, we need those 0.7 volts to turn on the base emitter junction uh, plus the other voltage. So in this case, VB is equal to VE plus 0.7 volts. So this will be VCC minus VE minus 0.7 divided by um, IB, which is 10 minus 4.5 um, minus 0.7, which is 1.3 divided by 10 micro. And it comes out to be 880 kilo ohms. So I have my three values. RC was 5 kilo ohms. RE is 500 ohms, ENRB is 880 kilo ohms. That's supposed to give me the Q point that I want. Uh, if we look at the simulations that we run, we got that for beta equals 100, IC was equal to 1.06 milliamps, so very close and VCE was equal to 4.18 volts. Again, very close to the 4.5. Not surprising since we assume beta equals 100 in order to do our calculations. Let's look at what happens when beta equals 300. That's where the rubber meets the road. And we get IC being equal to 1.79 milliamps. It's quite a jump. And VCE being equal to 126 millivolts. Oh, oh, we are in saturation mode again. Little red light there. We just drove our transistor into saturation just by picking the wrong transistor, right? The one with the wrong beta. So the way we've designed this emitter biasing configuration, it's not very robust to beta variations, it appears. Now, you may have heard that um, the emitter biasing configuration was good because it was robust to beta variations. Um, and so this contradicts a little bit what you may uh, have heard or, um, or thought you heard. Um, the reason for that is, it is true, emitter biasing configuration is actually robust to beta variations, or I should say could can be robust to beta variations, uh, but there are other arrangements or other conditions that need to be made in order for that to be the case. We're going to see that um, in the next video. Thank you.